Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Lucinda here from Yellow Chic Road. So happy to have you back if you're a subscriber, but if you're not, please make sure you click the button to subscribe and make sure you turn on the notifications with that bell. So today we are going to discuss some of my favorite vintage pieces. So with all this time that we've had at home, I've been doing a little bit of organizing. I've tried to, because I do not love to do jobs around the house. It's not normally where I put my time, but I have been enjoying organizing things a little bit lately. And I've sort of stumbled across some pieces that I had purchased from, you know, over 10 years ago and things that I've just really loved. And I am a hoarder. I do not get rid of things. I have a problem. I will just stockpile everything, particularly if I've got some sort of emotional attachment to the item. And I know that it's just stuff. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I know. But I love these pieces still and I just wanted to share them with you and I've sort of my rule for what I am going to show you was if they were 10 years or older is what I'm sort of classifying as vintage and I will take you through um, like bags and scarves the small leather goods and ready to wear so some clothing that I also have kept on to even though it don't fit so guys let's jump right in I also just wanted to know that one of my first ever videos here on YouTube was featuring some of my vintage Louis Vuitton bags, so I really don't want it to be like a rehash of that, but I am including some Louis Vuitton pieces that I just adore, so I have to include. But I will link that original video down below, just in case you want to check that out as well. First little cutie, first little cab off the rank, the Louis Vuitton denim pleaty. Well, this is called the Mini Pleaty. I bought this from the store here, well, my local store, back, way back when, I think it was like 2007. And they are still hammering out some denim pieces, particularly in clothing, um, Louis Vuitton. So I think this is still very much a relevant piece. It's got what they called a koala clasp. So you can sort of see it looks like a little koala nose there. Um, and my first, this is my second one, because the first one that I purchased, it had a faulty clasp. The gold was chipping, so it was um, nicely replaced by Louis Vuitton shortly after I had bought it. And it just slides up and you've got this really gorgeous sort of mustard microfiber lining and it's just really cute and it fits what you need and it's such a vibe right now um again something i would never get rid of so this is a piece i actually picked up pre-loved last year or the you know i must have been here last year and it is the pochette accessoire with the murakami panda on it so i was just so 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 in love with this piece um, and missed out on it when it was first released because I was a little bit too young for this guy and I just love love the panda and his little panda butt on the back it's just such a cute little piece and it's just a bit of fun I'm really careful when I wear it I don't want to wear anything abrasive because we all know that this silk uh, screen printing tends to wear or can easily um, sort of chip away so I'm very cautious with that. But one thing that I have had enjoyment from doing is attaching like a longer pochette matisse strap to this and just wearing it crossbody, and it's a little bit of fun. So this needs no introduction because it is just so OG Louis Vuitton circa 2003 multicolor Alma bag. And I actually bought this one as well, pre-loved, because again, was not something that was able to be purchased by myself at the time. Um, and I managed to score it in such amazing condition. And the patina overall is really even. And the actual canvas looks amazing. And the shape looks amazing. And it's just so beautiful. It is such a happy bag. And for anybody who is interested in the multicolor, I really do recommend getting a piece if you can find 
a good because they the prices are kind of crazy on these as well even in the pre-love market but if you can get a good deal on a piece and it sort of makes your heart sing i say go for it because they are so much fun um and hopefully i know there's a lot of people trying to push um for louis vuitton to revisit the multicolor monogram or in some sort of aspect so hopefully that's a thing that can come down the pipe because it would be so welcomed by the lv fan community um, but yeah, I just thought I would leave this little guy as my um, final Louis Vuitton bag in this little video. But um, as I said, there's plenty more in my other video, which I referenced earlier. So next up is this super, super, super duper cute Fendi bag. Oh my gosh. Every time I pull this out, I'm like, do I actually own this? Like, is this real? Is this little Fendi baguette bag real? And it is so real and it is so beautiful. And it's got this amazing spiral kind of whip stitching all the way around. And you know what else is really cool? Let me tell you. The other really cool thing is it comes with not one, but, no way. That was done really poorly. Two, two, there's two straps, and it is in here somewhere, I promise. Two straps. So you can be like the cutie with the little shoulder strap in true, you know, Carrie Bradshaw baguette style, um, or you can have it as a nice sort of long crossbody bag. It is just so beautiful. The leather, I can't even tell you how, like it feels like you, it's like paper thin, but it's so, durable like i haven't had any issues with it considering its age by the way i bought this in 2008 so it is 12 years old and still super relevant um i got its little card in here a little tissue and yeah it's a really great size so these little guys here at the side you've got the buckles that you sort of then weave those onto on the little straps and if you don't want that at all, you can take it off completely and have it as a clutch. It is a three-way bag. Groundbreaking. And it's a Fendi baguette. Forever. So I thought I would share that with you. So a vintage and timeless beauty is definitely the Chanel classic flap. So this is in the medium large size. This is it is in stellar condition with the 24 karat gold this is approximately i think when i checked the date code it's sort of from 90 1996 or 98 one of those two years but it is in just such beautiful condition and it is so timeless i mean there's not much to say apart from it is so beautiful and timeless and i have done a special video just on this guy alone which i will also link down below for you if you haven't seen it already but it is just a little handy video on um what to look out for when you're buying vintage chanel bags but i think if you're a vintage collector and you love chanel it is such uh you know it's something that you try and aim for is getting one of these guys because as i said it's a forever piece so this will be so unexpected to virtually everybody watching this video. You are just not going to know what's coming out of this bag. You're just not going to even know. But basically, one of my favorite ever designers, period, ever, is Alexander McQueen. And this particular bag, I was like, I need to call when it arrives. I need to get this bag. I'm probably never going to use this bag, but I need this bag to be in the midst of my life forever so it is the alexander mcqueen large flapper bag in the most epic ode to like england you've ever seen <laughs> like this is insane and by the way it still smells like it did when i bought it 2008 2008 it has the most amazing charms. Like you've got the little British soldier, you've got the chain. Look at this clasp. It is so like 
okay, fine. You're not carrying this around. Okay, fine. It's not to the taste of, you know, what people are carrying right now. But I'm telling you, this bag is just so beautiful. And it is just the detail, the leather, the color. But wait, but wait, 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 wait. I have to show you the inside because the inside, it's, it's about what's on the inside that counts. And for this bag, it's definitely about what's on the inside that counts. So let me just get my little aeroplane zipper and zipper open. And let me just get the piles of tissue out that we don't need right now because we must see the inside. And the inside is lined in the most insane silk lining that again an ode to England and you've got this amazing section I hope you can see it guys I hope you can see it but it says happy and glorious God save McQueen ah, it's so good it's just so good so any McQueen lovers out there know he went through this whole, he did this whole collection that was very much, um, you know, all things England and that whole um, concept of God save McQueen was sort of emblazoned on many things. And this guy, I just loved everything about the fact that it was, you know, very Alexander McQueen to be taking something and completely running with it like he ran with it so i just thought i'd show you that because this guy was one of those special pieces that i really really wanted to have in my collection and again i'm sure a lot of people out there won't quite understand or won't quite get it won't quite understand the appeal but it is just so beautiful and it is quite impressive so i just wanted to share that with you guys thought i'd show you my only Louis Vuitton small leather good that is actually um, older than 10 years old and that is the zippy coin purse in the multicolor and it has been well loved well used you can sort of I don't know if you can sort of see it but it does have sort of chipping on the print um, which at the time of using this I didn't know that was going to happen I really wish I was told that but maybe Anyway, I really enjoyed using this, so I shouldn't say I wish I was told that and maybe I would have, you know, eased off the use a bit, but because I really got a lot of love and a lot of enjoyment out of this. Um, and this one I actually bought in 2008 from the Louis Vuitton in Dubai in the Bergerman Center. This is the receipt because I do weird stuff, I keep receipts. And yeah. I can't, there's no even no point in telling you a price because it was in dirhams and I have no idea what the um, conversion is on that. But I really love this piece. I love multicolor and this one is a really cool little guy to have. So moving on to some vintage scarves because back in, when I was really getting into Alexander McQueen, he of course had his very, very, very popular skull emblazoned silk scarves. So I have a few of these in my collection in terms of different, um, not just different colors, but sort of different iterations on the skull scarf. And as in keeping with that um, British kind of theme of the bag that I showed you, this has all the skulls sort of draped in this, in I guess in the flag and it's got the God Save McQueen all around the edging and it is just a really beautiful silk. So I thought I would show you some of those because again, they're things that I've loved for over a decade and I will never get rid of them. And just on the topic of vintage scarves, I've got two from Louis Vuitton and these were recently acquired by the way, because Anybody that watches my videos know I love bandeaus and I love Louis Vuitton scarves. So I had the opportunity of buying this from a local um, sort of designer consignment store um, here in my city. And it's called Designer Archives. They do have a great Instagram and a website for those that wanted to check them out. But they sometimes get these like 
killer pieces. And this is the Cherry Murakami Louis Vuitton scarf. And, 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 this is just so, so sick. I have to show you guys. So I was lucky with both of these that they came in sort of the original packaging. I bought these at separate times, but both from designer archives. This one still had the receipt. I paid more than this person paid because that's what happens. That's what happens when things become popular again. And it is the Murakami flower scarf with all the smileys and this is in a cotton and it is just joy i mean how do you not look at that and smile like it's so good and i was really quick to snap this up as soon as they put it on their instagram i messaged them and i'm like i need that i'll get that see you in an hour so that's how that went down and it was just a very good very quick and very lucky little pickup because it was $4.75 back in 2010. And I think I paid like 600 and something or 700, but yeah, it was in perfect unwarm condition. So it's a bit of fun. So I also wanted to share with you, I've got two pairs of vintage shoes that I wanted to share with you because I think there's just either a nice story or there's something a little bit cool. So these are a pair of Dior shoes that I picked up. I would like to say, oh, receipt. Ah, I was gonna guess it and I was right. 31st of December, 06. So these are from 2006 and I got them on sale at half off and that's amazing. I'm excited for my former self. Um, so basically I had bought these, loved them. They're such a great fit, honestly. And it's the Dior Oblique Pump in the brown mix. And these are seriously, if they had these on the shelf right now, I think they'd probably walk out the door because they are just the nicest fit on the foot and they're just super cute. And what's not to love about a bit of Dior Oblique? So the other pair of shoes that I will share with you is another, is another Alexander McQueen item um, because I, as I said before, collected a lot of his pieces. Um, and this particular shoe is wild. It's wild and it was from his sort of most prolific collection, I'll say, from Plato's Atlantis. I'll include a few screen screenshots of the show because it is so recognizable and it was so incredible. And it's one of the collections that he's most remembered for. Um, but these shoes, I've never worn. Why, why have you never worn them, Lucinda? Because they're not my size. I bought them so I could have them and own them. And that is literally <laughs> where that ends. So how about I just show you what these look like? Because... <laughs> these are the Titanic ballerina pumps from Alexander McQueen. Not in Lucinda's size, but in Lucinda's hands because she wanted them. And they are just, oh, I have no words for these and I'm sure you're sitting there and probably don't have many either. But they are a work of art. They were featured on the runway in a slightly different leather iteration to really go with the show. These are literally an art piece. You could just use them as a bookshelf, like bookends. I don't know. The point is, hi, I'm Lucinda and I collect things. And this is one of my most proudest purchases because it is so special to those that get it. So not to completely bore you with a bunch of clothing, but I just thought I'd share with you some of my favorite pieces that I've ever purchased that were 
higher end luxury in the ready to wear field. This is a Miu Miu dress and it was from a 2008 collection and it was based on Harlequins and this has this really mysteriously cool Harlequin lady on it. Um, again, I'm not fitting into this. I'm never going to fit into this again because this is 12 years ago and that is fine by me, but I just love it. I love the colors and just look at that printed silk. It is just so beautiful. And I think this collection was very special to Miu Miu. So 2008 was a very special year for me for some reason. There was just so many collections that I just absolutely adored and really loved and really spoke to me. And this particular piece, I was so dedicated to finding. And I actually found it overseas when I was away. And it is the Prada Iconic, Iconic Fairy Skirt. And it's got the um, James Jean artistry all over it. He's a brilliant artist, and he's collaborated with he's collaborated with Prada a few times now. But this was, I believe, their first time collaborating back in 2008. I'll include a runway shot of this skirt um, just so you can see it because it was something they even featured in the Met Museum when they had conversations. Well, I think it was a conversations with. Prada and Chaparelli. I'll have to double check on that, but it is a beautiful piece and a very much something that I just genuinely am so excited to have this forever in my wardrobe. So last but definitely not least, the most important piece of ready to wear in my collection, I would say. Um, it was just something I had to buy. There was no question, I had to do it because it was very, very important and symbolic. And that is the Balmain Spring Summer 09 military jacket in the denim. Now, this piece I have spoken about before in a former video. It meant so much to me because not only is it just, I mean, so beautiful, but Basically, this collection was inspired by, influenced by Michael Jackson and his military jackets. And I was like, I need this jacket. I need to be walking around in this jacket. And Michael Jackson leading up to his death was wearing a lot of Balmain and a, because they were really influenced by him. So they really wanted him wearing some pieces. So I just really, after he passed away, thought, I need just need to do it and I'm going to be out of pocket for a lot of monies but it just meant I don't know you know when there's certain things that in your life you want to do and want to have that slice want to have that you know it means something to you this meant something to me and it is just I think one of the most impressive jackets I've ever seen and the buttons the binding the color of the denim is so great, but I just thought I'd share that with you because this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite vintage pieces ever. So everyone, I thought that would just be a really fun little show and tell video. We've got lots of time on our hands, so I've been sort of going through my pieces, just trying to organize things, and I just fell in love with a lot of these things all over again. And for those that know me well, know I'm somewhat of a fashion collector and I really do get attracted to things that mean something to me. It's not just about hyped pieces. It's not just about everybody wants it, so I want it too. It's things that just, and that I think that shows in some of these pieces. They're things that really speak to me and I love them and I get enjoyment out of them. And this is what life is about. I know a lot of people probably look at it and think, oh, it's just stuff and you're a hoarder and it's just things and, you know, they don't really have any intrinsic value. But if something adds joy to your life, then it does have value. And I'm telling you, this girl was rocking around in that Balmain jacket at work. I would wear it to work. And I didn't care that I had these shoulders out to here. I just loved it and I loved wearing it. 
and that is what life is about just enjoying what you can and getting out of it what you can so hope you liked this video please like and subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in my next one thanks so much Ooh. not that that's a bit no i've lost it i lost it This guy is really just a treasure. It, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy Toledo, <laughs> make it stop. What is that? Oh, no. <laughs> I meant it's a freaking nervous <laughs> laugh. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I know this. <laughs> My eyes have gone all. Mm. <laughs> I can't stop talking when I look like I'm crying. <laughs> compose, compose yourself. <laughs>